All right, so I guess while we're waiting, what I'd like to have you do, please, is not not do what I'm doing right now, but kind of watch what I'm doing. All right. Now, next semester, I want to show you two different ways to create projects here. All right. The reason for that is one is the way we're going to use in this example, and one is the way that the author of the textbook you'll be using for fall does it most of the time. All right. Now, you're used to coming in here and doing a file, new project, you know, going over here to Visual C Sharp and either choosing a console app or a Windows Form app. All right. And basically right now, after this semester, that changes. You won't do it like that anymore. All right. Instead, what you'll be doing is you'll be doing a file new project. Yeah, that's the same. But we're going to be going underneath web here. All right. And if you go under web, again, I don't want you to do it right now because I want to I show you a couple things. We're not going to choose the ASP.NET Core Web application. You're never going to choose that one. That's the latest and the greatest. But what's happened is we found that most places that are hiring ASP.NET developers are still using the older version, which is what we're going to be using. All right, and that's the rationale behind that. So you'll come in here, you know, you'll set up your your uh, location, and I'll just come in here and say um, garbage one. All right, why? I'm going to get rid of it in just a minute. So you'll do this again. You'll click on that one, and you'll click OK. Then this will come up, and this looks different than anything you've seen before. All right, the class that you'll take in fall. <clears throat> is very much concerned with model view controller. That's the MVC that you see right there. All right. I'm going to choose that in just a minute. But you'll notice here there's a bunch of things that you can choose. The ones that we care about, there's only two of them. One of them is MVC like you see right here. The other one is empty. When you choose empty, you basically get an empty project. All right, so in other words, if I chose empty here, and I don't want you to do this, if I didn't choose any of these, none of these, all right, and I clicked OK, I basically have just about an empty project. It would have a file or two in it, and that's it. All right. What we're going to do a lot next semester is we're going to choose empty, and then we're going to choose MVC. All right, so empty and MVC, and we're going to click OK. All right, and it'll start to create a project for us that's not actually empty. All right, you're like, well, you just said we chose empty. Yes, but since we chose MVC, and again, I realize that might not be that easy for you to see this, but it created a bunch of folders for us. All right, in this folder that's called app data, that's basically that's where our databases are going to exist. All right. We've got another one here that's called app start. And notice there's a file in it called route config. Don't worry about it right now. We're going to actually take a look at it in a few minutes. All right. Then there's another one called controllers, one called models, and one called views. And other than a single file or so, this thing called views is empty. Well, the reason I'm telling you this is we're going to be working with MVC. MVC stands for Model View Controller. So that's what we're going to be working with come fall. All right. And well, there'll be more in here as well. But so why did I even show you that? Because this is, again, is the way that the author of the textbook that we use, this is the way he will create most of his projects. Why? Because he wants you to go and add things manually as opposed to automating them. All right. And we're going to do that in fall, but we're going to do it very slowly. I'm trying to go over a 120 page PDF in a week with you. And you might think, well, there's no way we're ever going to do that. A lot of it is just the whole page is just pictures, literally. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this. And now what you can do is you can start following. Even if that uh, if that stuff hasn't reached its way to you yet, that's okay. 
But what I'd like all of you to do then is to start up Visual Studio. So please start it up if you haven't already. We don't need this start page. But do a file, new, project, and again, choose web over here and choose ASP.NET Web Application .NET Framework. Don't, bless you, don't choose the other one. Choose that one. All right? Good, bad, or indifferent, they ask you to call this project capital M. Capital M. Little VC, capital M. O V I E. MVC movie with a capital M for MVC with a capital M for movie. So please put that in there for your name. All right. So right here where it says web application, MVC movie. Now again, set up your location, whether it's the desktop or someplace else. All right. We're not going to worry about Git right now. Yes. Is there anybody else who's got that situation where you don't have a web? All right, then it has to be the way that, that when you did your um, when you did your install, it's not in there. That's all I can think of. But it actually should be there by default. Uh, we'll take a look at it during the break. For now, maybe you can just look on with the person next to you. What I plan on doing is when we get totally done with this, hopefully everything will work just fine. And I'll give everybody a working copy of it. All right. All right. So again, right there, MVC movie. Don't put any spaces. MVC, M-O-V-I-E, one word with a big M and a big M. And click OK. Now, we're going to do this differently. We're going to choose MVC. And when you choose MVC here, it automatically ticks this MVC button. Do not click OK yet. All right. Why? Because I want to show you this over here. There are places in this PDF or in this document that we're going to go over where the author does things but doesn't tell you that he's done them. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like later it's like, well, what the hell? You never did this. Yeah, he did. He just never said that he did. All right. This is the authentication. Before... This button was grayed out because we created an empty project. The project is no longer empty, so we can come in here and we can set our authentication. And you'll notice if you look, there are four kinds of authentication. Believe it or not, we don't care about the bottom two at all. The bottom one says Windows authentication, which basically means if you've logged in through Windows, you can get to this. All right. The one above that says work on school accounts, and that is if we had special accounts set up for you here, which we don't. If we were all on a network and you were all using these machines, that might be different. The second one says individual user accounts, and the top one says no authentication. All right. When I created this project for the first time, I chose no authentication and I got up to about page, I don't know, a lot later. And I realized, oh boy, I should, have not, I should not have chosen no authentication. The one I want you to choose is individual user accounts. The second one that's right there. What that will do, because we're going to create this project, and believe it or not, with nothing in it, we're going to run it right away. And when we run it, what you'll see is you'll have a couple of hyperlinks way up in the upper right hand corner one that says login and one that says register you get those two hyperlinks and you get yet another built-in database because you're choosing right there individual user accounts so sometimes we'll be choosing the first one that says no authentication Sometimes we'll be choosing the second one. Even next semester, to my knowledge, we'll never choose either of the bottom two. So please make sure that you've chosen individual user accounts here and click OK. All 
All right. So it should have changed the authentication here to individual user accounts. Yours should be changed. All right. And if it is, click OK here again. Again, make sure MVC is the one you chose, which will automatically choose this. Next semester, we're doing nothing with Web API. We could make a whole class just in that. All right. So click OK. And now what you're going to see is it's going to look similar to what I showed you before, but there's a bunch more stuff filled in for you. So in other words, there's a bunch of stuff that will already be created in here. When we did this the first time, and this is just a start page. Don't, I mean, you can close that if you want. When we did this the first time, under App Start, there was a file called Route Config and nothing else. You'll notice there's a bunch more stuff in there right now. All right? If you look under Controllers, when we did it at first, there was nothing under there. There are now three controllers. Under Content, there was nothing there. Now... It gives you a bunch of bootstrap stuff by default. Under fonts, don't even worry about this for right now, but it gives you some glyphicons. All right. Under models, this was empty before. It's not empty anymore. Under views, or I should go scripts, that's your JavaScript files. And under views, that was empty before. You can see none of it's empty right now. What I'd like to have you do, and this should work with no problem, right out of the box, but in order for you to run this, okay, you've got to tell it what file you want it to run. So please look up on the screen. If you have not already done so, open up this folder that says Views. Then underneath that, open up the folder that says Home. So open up your Views folder and then open up your home folder under views. All right. And then find the file that says index.cshtml. We're going to talk about what all this stuff means in just a bit. Single click on that file. Don't double click on it. Just single click on the file. Then right mouse click on it and choose view and browser. That's all I want you to do. And you might say, oh, well, that's all. That was a lot. No, it really wasn't. The stuff was created for you automatically by you just choosing some options. All right? And then I wanted you to go into Views, and under Views, I wanted you to go into the Home folder, and under the Home folder, I wanted you to choose index.cshtml, then right mouse click on that and choose View in Browser. Now, yours might not say Browser Chrome. It doesn't matter. All right? It's whatever it considers to be the default browser that you have. And after you do that, just literally click on it where it says View in Browser. And it's going to bring it up on the screen. So for lack of better words, this is the project that you get right out of the box. All right? And there's a few things with it. As I told you before, if you look up on the screen here, this register and login, we got that because we chose those individual user accounts. If we had kept it at, the, at its default, which was no authentication, you wouldn't have these. They would not be there. All right. This is our home page. So if I click on it, I don't go anywhere because I'm at the home page you get kind of a cheesy little about page and kind of a cheesy little contact page. You get that stuff by default. We're not going to worry about that right now. All right? And this is the name of the application. We're going to change a bunch of this stuff as we go on. You'll notice you don't have to do this. But you'll notice if I say uh, register, I can come in there and I can put in JP Scott at rankin.edu, password, I think it's got to be six characters at least, and it's got to have an uppercase letter and a number and, and like a <coughs> special character. So I'm going to put in here H E 
H-E-L-L-O-1-2-3, comma, and H-E-L-L-O-1-2-3, comma. And I forgot to put an uppercase one in there, so notice says you got to at least have one uppercase in there. So I'll put it in again, and I'll make the H in hello uppercase. H, lower, big H, little E-L-L-O, one, two, three, comma, big H, little E-L-L-O, one, two, three, comma. Click register, and now notice, it's going to take a second, okay, whether you save it or not is totally up to you, but notice I'm logged in. See that? Again, is that a big thing? It's, it's a big thing in that you get log in right out of the box without you having to do anything. In older versions of this software, you had to write the code to do that yourself. And I will tell you, it was a pain in the butt. All right? They had this whole membership thing that they set up, and it was not fun. So if I want to log off, I just click there, boom, I'm logged off. All right? The other thing, you may or may not remember this, does this look familiar to you? Not not the words. Does this shape and the gray look familiar to you? Yeah, it's a bootstrap jumbo truck. So in other words, this file, if you look at it, is already the site. This is a website. It's already responsive. All right? And we don't have to do anything to it. It's, it looks pretty ugly the way it is. So we'll change it around, but the point is there's not a lot that you have to do. It's already got the responsiveness built into it. All right, so I'm going to jump back into, the, into what I gave you before, and we're, then we're going to go back and forth between these. All right, so in the handout that I gave you before, if you bring that up, again, if you open up that folder, I've got it in there as both a PDF document and as a Word document, there's a folder called PDF. There's a folder called Word. You can open up either one. And what you'll notice, I've got the PDF one here, is it's 120 pages. All right? But guess what? It's even more than that. And what I mean is, if you look up on the screen here, I just want you to see this. This particular thing, it's, it's right here. It's from online. So I took this stuff that's online. I took these 11 presentations, bundled them up into one, and put them into a PDF. All right? Why am I telling you that? Well, let's let's suppose we do get this done this weekend. And you're like, geez, I wonder what these are. This one here and this one here. You can do those yourselves as well. We're not going to do them just because we don't have the time. They're both nice presentations. But this is the intro one right here, so that's the one that we're going to use. We're going to go through all 11 lessons, or as many lessons of these as we possibly can. The good news is every single piece of code that you have to put in is already given to you. You may find it easier <clears throat> to copy the code from the Word document, or you may find it easier to copy the code from the PDF, all right, as we get going. I don't expect this to 100% make sense to you, but it's kind of cool in that we've got enough time that we can create something, and it's not going to be all that different from what we're going to be doing in fall, and that's the idea behind it, all right? Last, what I did last year at this time for the, the people who were in your situation, we didn't have this extra week like this. We did other things. So I showed them this, and I said, hey, it'd be really nice if you went through this this summer. You could probably guess that out of the umpteen people, whatever there was in the class, no one went through it, not one person. So at least you have gone through it. All right? Okay. So starts with getting started. So we're going to take a quick look at that. It says here there's a newer updated version, but it uses ASP.NET Core, which is the newest version of this. In fact, since this document came out, there's been ASP.NET Core version 1.0, and now there's ASP.NET Core 
version 2.0. The people at St. Louis have made the determination after talking with people from business and industry, we should still be using the version that we're using. And we can use that even though in fall we're going to Visual Studio 2019. It should still work just fine. All right. There's a bunch of terms in here that you probably have never heard of before, such as razor pages. What the heck is a razor page? We're going to look at that. Believe it or not, that page I asked you to open up, okay, the, the one that was index.cshtml, that page had razor in it. What's razor? Razor is C sharp code that you can put into HTML files. That's what it is. All right, you're going to see it as we go on. All right. They go through and they say, create your first app. They tell you to choose MVC. The funny thing is they tell you to use no authentication. But then later when you look through it and you run this, they've got register and login right here, which means they wanted you to choose authentication. They just didn't tell you to do so. All right. I've already shown you this, that right out of the box, I showed you the home page the contact page, and the about page. I also demonstrated for you the fact that it was responsive because it had bootstrap in. My hope in fall is that every one of you will be able to get the project or projects we work on up and on to Microsoft Azure. All right, why is, why is that important? You'll get your own URL it has nothing to do with ranking, but you'll get your own space out on a Microsoft server where you'll be able to stand up or put your project out there and then anyone who has an internet connection will be able to type in that URL and bring up your project, including prospective employers. That's the idea behind it. All right. So. There's 11 things in here. We just went through the first one. All right? And again, I'm not going to say, hey, did all that make sense? Maybe very little of it made sense. And believe it or not, that is okay. All right? So you'll notice, again, we've got 11 lessons in here. We just went through lesson one, getting started. Look at lessons two, three, and four. Now we're going to add a controller. After we add the controller, we're going to add a view after we add the view we're going to add a model all right so what does that even mean what the heck is model view controller all right and I'm going to answer it from the beginning when we get to, the, to part four here when we do the model you're going to create a C sharp class y'all remember classes back from the object oriented chapters you're going to create a class but what that class is going to do is we're going to put a bunch of field names in it. The model, typically, in a model view controller project, the model typically holds classes where when you run a command, it's going to create the database for us. All right? So the model is your model of the data. All right? We're going to look at that in just a bit. The view is what you let the user see. So in other words, when I ran that before and I showed you what that what that thing looked like and how it was responsive, etc., that was the view. All right? The controller, which is where we're going to start right here, the controller is the go between. So you can kind of look at it like this and different you can go online, you can find different pictures. But I like this one where you've got here the controller, you go here and you've got the model, you go here and you've got the view. Now some books will show this. They'll show this, then they'll show this, and then they'll show this. That actually isn't correct. Because what this is showing is the model and the view talking to one another. They never technically do. This is how model view controller works. All right. So what happens is 
you come in and you type in a URL. Okay? You go in and you type in a URL. The controller takes a look at that and it says, okay. I might have to call a different controller. I might be able to do something else, but eventually I'm going to call a model. And it's going to bring up a database and it's going to do some stuff. And then the model is going to return stuff back to the controller. Then the controller is going to say, okay. And it's going to pass some stuff to the view. And then the view will pass stuff to the user. I mean, in a nutshell, that's what it is. You can go online. You can go out to Udemy. Or not Udemy. You can go out to Wikipedia.com, for example. Type in model view controller and, and find more detailed explanations if you want that. All right. I knew that if all I did was sit there and talk for a week, nobody was going to listen. Nobody was going to retain anything. But I figured if we would run something like this, create a project, that at least come fall when you heard this stuff, oh, yeah, I kind of remember when we did that at the end of last semester. So that's the idea behind this. All right. So the author mentions this in here. I'm not going to read to you. You can see it, what a model is, what a view is, and what a controller is. All right. Models are code. They're classes that directly or indirectly represent some kind of what's called a data store. Usually it's a database. Could be a spreadsheet. Could be something else. All right. Views, again, are what we show and users, and controllers are the traffic cop. They make sure that everything works the way that it's supposed to work. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to create a controller. All right. Now the example that they have us do first in this section it's kind of a, a, for lack of better words, kind of a goofy, dumb little example. But they're just trying to get you acclimated to what's going on here. So please look up on the screen. All right? If you're not right here, please get right here. All right? Right now, if you look on the screen, you don't have to do this. But what I want you to see is right now on the screen, under controllers, we have three controllers. We've got a home controller, and that basically is what's in charge of showing us our home page and our about page and our contact page. That's basically its job. All right. We've also got an account controller and a manager controller. Those are more in charge of that register and login stuff that you see. The more you get into actually doing this stuff, the more controllers you will end up building. We're going to build one right now. All of you, well, everybody who's got that stuff on your screen. So what I'd like you to do is to right mouse click on the controllers folder and choose add and choose controller. Right mouse click on your controllers folder, choose add and choose controller. Just like that. All right. So when you do, it's going to come up and look like this. Don't choose anything yet. All right. I will tell you that, again, the only ones we will care about for this project and for next semester are the top three. We don't care about the bottom four because it's their web API. So if you want to create a brand new controller with nothing at all in it, you choose MVC5 controller empty. Okay. If you want a controller, as it says, with read-write actions, meaning that it's going to be used for a database, you choose the second one. If you want one that's used with a database that uses something special built up, built for this, that's called the EF or the Entity Framework, you choose the third one. All right. So if we go back and we take a look here, oh, I thought I had it up. All right. What it says is 
we want to choose empty, which is the top one. All right, so choose empty, which is the one on top, MVC5 controller dash empty, and then click add, and it should show you this little box right here. You say, I don't know what you mean. Well, just watch that. All right, I'm going to choose empty, and I'm going to click add. All right, and it brings up this box. All right, if you haven't done that, please do that. Now, don't hit enter. When you know when you create controllers, and again, this is these are rules. These are Microsoft MVC rules. Controllers must end with the word controller. Look on the screen, please. You notice how the word defaults in blue, but that's it. We're going to create our own first controller. We're going to call it Hello World with a big H and a big W. So I'd like you to type in Hello World, just like that. Don't put any blank spaces in it. Give it a capital H. Give it a capital W. And keep the word controller at the end. All right? So it says, hello, world, controller. And if you go, I can't read that. You have it in the article that I gave you. You all have it in there. All right, so hello, world, controller. After you put that in, click add. Now, what happened? A lot of stuff actually happened right now. And again, I realize it's easier for you to look at your own machines than it is to look up here. But what I want you to see is it built a new controller under our controllers folder called Hello World Controller CS. It also put in a new file here, a new folder that says Hello World. That folder is empty. It's empty because we chose MVC Empty Controller. So it built a folder for us, but it made the folder empty. All right. All right. And that's what they're showing you right here. I realize that some of this doesn't resonate real well. That's why I gave you the copy. All right. So the first thing they want us to do, please look up on the screen here is make sure you open up the file, open up the file that's called helloworldcontroller.cs. You all know how to open up files. It's right here, so just click on it. I have to double click, I guess. And there it is. All right. I'm not going to go over a bit of what this means because first thing we're going to do is get rid of everything that's in there. All right, we're getting rid of everything that's in there. Why? Because the author gives you here in this handout all the code you should put in there. All right, so I'm going to highlight all of this code, highlight all of it, right mouse click and choose copy, and come back to here and paste it in. I've got all new code now. So again, we catch back up on here. If you're following along with the handout that I gave you, that's the code that's on page 14. All right. You know, and, and I, I'm looking at your faces. First of all, you all have your Monday faces on. All right. And second of all, I can see you all thinking, oh, gee, I just, we're, we're doing this. I'd rather show it to you now when you've been in this room 15 weeks than show it to you day one when you come back here in August when every one of your minds is still on your vacation. All right? So let's take a look at what's in here. Let's just go over this code. And I don't expect it to totally make sense. But if you look up on the screen or you look at your own code, the, the second line here that says using system.web.mvc, that MVC, as you'd probably guess, stands for Model View Controller. You'll have that using file in virtually everything you do. And at least sometimes, 
System Web MVC needs System Web. That's why these two are in here. All right. This is the name of the folder, for lack of better words. All right. For the project, we called it MVC Movie. So it makes a namespace that's called MVC Movie, and it's letting us know we're in the controllers part right now. All right. We just created a controller. You saw it. You did it. That's called Hello World Controller. This line here says, we just created our Hello World controller. All controllers inherit from controller. That's all it says. Right? I'm asking you this question. Do you remember from the first semester, those of you who were in the class first semester, do you remember when we talked about working on websites and we talked about doing a get? You remember that? Do you remember what was the opposite of a get? What? Oh, you're you're, you're taking me too literally. I don't mean with code. All right. I mean when we, we when we um, when you had an address that you keyed in a URL and you put a question mark after that. We had that query string. Remember that? That was a get. The other thing that we did was a post. Why am I telling you that? Because what you're going to end up doing in, in your controllers is you're going to end up writing get methods and post methods. You're going to write get method methods if you want to show the user something. You're going to write post methods if you want to allow the user to change what's in there. All right. And if you say, I'm still confused, think about the database stuff we did. A get is like a select statement. Remember I always told you you couldn't change data with a select? A post is like an insert, update, or a delete. You can change the data. All right? So this is the get method. All right? It automatically created a routine for us called index. And that index says, this is my default action. All right? And it automatically created something called welcome for you that says, this is the welcome action method. I don't expect that to make any sense to you whatsoever. All right? So what we're going to do then is we're going to come back to our project here. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you just copy that in like I told you to. All right. And we're going to do a file, save all. All right. And then we're going to run this again. So we're going to go back to home where we just were. We're going to right mouse click on index.cshtml. And we're going to choose view and browser. Same exact way we just did. And you say, well, it looks pretty much just, it won't in just a second. All right. So what we did, what we did was we told the system right now, look on the screen. We told it to go home and run index. I'm not saying does that make sense to you, but you all can see that it says home index. Why am I telling you that? Well, look up on the screen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn, you know, uh, I'll leave this up. Should be able to. Remember we have a controller called home? See this? Notice if I bring that up, it's got a thing in there called index. That's what it's running. Did you say, well, it doesn't have the, the, the jumbo trying? It, it does. Don't worry about that right now. But with what we just did... We told it to invoke the home controller, and by default, when it invokes the home controller, it invokes the index method. So how are we going to change this? Please look up on the screen here. With this up, 
get rid of where it says home index. And I don't remember if I made it movie or movies. Okay, let's try it with an S. Oh, okay, I know what you do. All right. What we're going to do then is we're going to come back here, and now we're going to go in here. No, where do we do this? Under Hello World, the problem is there's nothing under Hello World. Would you all agree with me? There's nothing under Hello World. All right? So we're going to have to change that in just a minute. All right? So going back to our handout here, it says the controller methods will return a string as an example. Now, even if you've understood nothing of what I've said so far, you should all be able to figure out what that right there in blue is doing. It's a method. It's called index. It returns a string, and the string it returns is this is my default action dot 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 and the word default will be bolded you should all see that and be able to understand that everybody should get that <clears throat> we also have another method in here that's called welcome that also returns a string and the string it returns is this is the welcome action method dot 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 all right so it says, run the application for uh, Pentello World to the path in the address bar. Okay. So I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to run this one more time. All right, so I'm going to run this again. It's going to look the same as it just did. All right. Why? It's going to look the same because... Notice now it doesn't even say home and it doesn't say index. We're going to take a break in a second, but sorry, Brock. Can you all see this? It says localhost. Your number's probably different. What happens when it runs this is it picks a random port on your machine and it runs it through there. All right? So we've got the random port and that's it. Notice if I put in here slash home and I hit enter, it looks exactly the same. If I put in here slash home slash index and I hit enter, it looks exactly the same because the system knows that if I don't put anything in, by default, go to the home controller and by default, run the index method. So let's change that. After the port number and the slash, I'm going to put in here, hello world, and it's totally case insensitive. So now I've got the name of my port, slash, hello world. I hit enter. This, where did it get that from? I'm asking you that question. Where did it get that from? Where did it get it from? From the index that was part of the home controller. All right. Remember, we had a thing called index. We also had one. So if after the word hello world, I type in welcome, I get the other one. So we went through that quickly, and we're going to take a break right now. But what I wanted you to understand was by default, so unless told otherwise, when we came in here to run this thing, the system went and looked and it said, okay, you got a home controller. That home controller has an index method. So that's what it ran by default. We just circumvented that by creating our own brand new controller called Hello World. And we said, after we, so we had to type in Hello World. And when we typed that in, this ran by default. And when we typed in hello world slash welcome, this ran. And that's what I want you to get out of what we've done so far. All right? It is 8.54. Let's come back at 9.05, please. <laughs>